Tom, it's it's totally outrageously sad that there are people who decide between eating and, and heat. And you know, in this world, there's, there's there's enough food. We sh- we shouldn't have to make these decisions. But you're still seeing a lot of a lot of people facing that. And I find people to be naive. You know, they they're literally your neighbors. The yep. people you you know, God God forbid, there's a ton of elderly in this situation. But I know people. You know, the average Joe and Mary who are struggling with this. You know, where they're like, geez, we're struggling to find enough food. We got the heat really turned down low. We got the kids underneath the blankets trying to keep them warm. That's sad. It is, and there's is. no need for it. We can, we can fix this problem. Yeah, yeah. So. and and you never like you had mentioned before. You never know who it is. It's yeah. uh, um, per, and, and oftentimes it's people you least expect. It's not necessarily the homeless person. Sure, certainly we support them in a lot of ways through our shelters and and uh, food pantries. Um, more often than not, it's the working poor. Yeah, you know, the, and often it's the the young mom or the young parents who are working one or two jobs trying to make mm-hmm. ends meet. But you look at the livable wage in the state, which sure. is quite high. We oh. we live in a uh, costly uh, state in the Northeast um, versus the minimum wage, and and you have two parents working two minimum wage jobs that's still below the livable wage. Yeah, it really is. People don't understand just how he's a thin that line is, Tom, between giver and receiver. You're right. You know, I've seen people show up at the food pantry with a donation and two months later be in receiving. You know, it just it is kind of interesting. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about the health care component of Catholic Charities because I don't know anything sure. about this. Yep. Like I mentioned before, we have eight uh, nursing facilities around the state. Um so we provide uh, skilled nursing services, rehabilitation services, subacute services, dementia services, long-term care services, things like that, uh, independent living, assisted living, and home care. So can we just go back to um, the food the food bank one more time? Absolutely. As you know, I, I, as you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of the food bank and <laughs> food pantries. But how many agencies now, because a lot of people use food pantry and food bank interchangeably, That's as you know. correct, right. You know, so the food bank actually provides food for the food pantries and other agencies. That's correct. How many agencies are they helping? The food bank is currently helping a little over 410 agencies wow. around the state. In Nashua alone, it's it's uh, 30 agencies. There were 657,000 pounds of food distributed in Nashua alone last year, a 19.9% increase from the year before. Yeah. You know, um, I didn't real, realize the impact of food banks. I used to serve on the board of the Merrimack Valley Food Bank great. before I went over to the Drake at Food Pantry. And, you know, it's it's great, Tom, when you hear those numbers, it really is. You don't have no idea what it means until you're standing in the food pantry looking out the line going, do we have enough food this week? Right. You know, without the food bank being there to provide for those the pantries and other agencies, there is no way they could ever do what they do. Right. So, you know, like I said, next time you're thinking about making a donation, please support the food pantry, support the food banks, because without the food bank, there's no food pantries. Right. You know, I know, right. speaking from the Dragon Food Pantry, there's no way we could accomplish what we do. And, you, you know, when you hear 600,000 plus, you know, Merrimack Valley Food Bank, over 3 million pounds, you're like, yeah. wow. Yep. But until you're standing and standing and looking out the at the door at people standing in line, you have yep. no idea right. how important that really is. Right. And l- last year, um, we distributed 8.4 million pounds of food throughout the state. And interestingly, when I started a little over seven years ago, we were at about uh, 15% in regards to the food we had to purchase. Now we're closer to 40%. Yeah. So it's it's getting more and more costly, sure. you know, to try to continue to meet the needs. There See, isn't as much uh, food being brought to market to test by the uh, um, producers. Yep. Um, and then anything, uh, even at the grocery level, um, anything that isn't selling, it might be discounted or it might be sold off to the dollar store. So yeah. there's uh, food is getting harder and harder to procure. So our costs are going up as well. It sure is. You know, we face that at the pantry when we don't, you know, get donations, which we're very blessed to receive a number of donations. Right. You have to go out and buy it. Right. And each month you see that it's just trickling up just a little bit little yep, bit yep. and you're like oh my god you know how are we going to continue to do this so right all right so and we're you, and you, we're fortunate yeah. to, per, to be able to pool our shares and purchase uh food through a consortium with the, the boston food bank the connecticut food bank um the main food banks so we're able to pool our shares and purchase uh food through the feeding america network so yep. we can get it at uh um, extremely sure. reasonable rates right. wholesale rates that's definitely Okay, so what's your greatest difficulty now? We've we've pretty much told all your problems, right. but what, what's number one? I, I think it it still is trying to continue to address the increasing needs that come to our door. Again, like I said before, with the with the working poor, the unemployed, the underemployed, and uh, um, uh, just trying to keep up with the demand. The demand is still going through the roof, and it's hard because um, people look at the economy of New Hampshire. The unemployment rate is low. The the economy is depending on who you ask, might be bouncing back. Yep. Um, but there's still that underemployed 
um, component that we neglect to see. I mean, they're not on the they're not reflected in the unemployment numbers, sure. but they may be taking a job just for the benefits. Yep. Um, not like what they had see before, a lot of that. and uh, just aren't really able to make ends meet. I mean, they're just subsiding. They're just subsisting.